Hey guys, it's Alicia. Um, I wanted to make a video to kind of give people some more info about what it's like owning a Newfoundland. So yes, I knew I have a golden retriever sitting behind me. There's my Newfoundland. Um, I've seen so many people have interest in getting a Newfoundland after seeing videos of mine named Daisy. And I want people to make that educated um, decision on whether a Newfoundland is <laughs> <laughs> is right for them or not. Excuse me. Well, my new phone likes a lot of squeaky toys, as you can hear, so I deal with a lot of squeaking. Are you done? Okay. First things first, I'm going to start off with some of the bad things. Um, and it's not necessarily bad, it's just... It's things that people may not find very desirable, so let's just put it that way. Um, first things first is Newfoundlands, they can get big. And when I mean big, I'm saying they can get so big that they look like a bear. Um, the nice thing about it though is even though they do get big, they, they may take up a lot of room in your home, but you don't necessarily have to have a huge home if you don't mind having a fluffy throw rug that you have to walk over or one that likes to take up your entire couch. Um, they are a very mellow breed. They're just kind of easy going and go with the flow, but they can potentially get very big, especially the males. Um, I've seen females get very large too, but Newfoundlands, you know, any dogs in general are just like people. They're not all the same. Each are different. Some may get really big, some may not get big at all, and some are just kind of in between. So you need to really have that in your mindset if you are prepared to take care of such a large dog. The next thing is with any large breed dog, or I wish, or should I say giant breed dog, um, they can have very long flappy jowls, which in return leads to a lot of slobber. Um, I've had people me you know, message me or comment and say that, oh my gosh, you know, I can't believe Daisy doesn't drool, but she does. Um, sh she's still a puppy too. So she does drool. She drools, you know, after she drinks, after she eats, after she plays, if she's hot. Um, I am constantly having to wipe her mouth. So in videos, you may not see you know, the drool, but it's because I wiped it off before we started filming. But then there's also videos too. If you look real close, especially when she's getting her little cheeky grin, she's got drool dropping onto her chest. So they are a drooly breed. And that is something that, you know, you need to consider if you can tolerate, because I know even though Daisy doesn't have super big jowls, um, when she shakes her head, it sure in the heck sounds like it. And my walls would agree that, you know, <laughs> they're big because I get slobber on my walls. So I do have to go through and clean my walls and my baseboard and stuff like that. So really, if, if you do not like a drooly dog, I would not suggest a Newfoundland. Next thing is shedding. Uh, I'm not new to dog shedding. I have two golden retrievers. At one point I had three and I'm constantly chasing my tail when it comes to cleaning up dog hair. Newfoundlands, they shed and they shed pretty much all year round. Um, with Daisy, I don't notice so much, so much of it now. Um, I had a Bernese Mountain Dog in the past and their fur texture is, is very similar, I believe. And I didn't really have a whole lot of shedding issues with my Bernies. And like I said, so far, I'm not really having too terrible of shedding issues with Daisy, but she's only eight months old and that can change. I mean, her adult coat is just, you know, it's coming in, but it's nowhere near what it, what it will be. Because I mean, I believe like their coats aren't fully in until they're like two, three years old. So she still has a lot of growing in that department as well. But I will say, I do notice that the shedding is worse when they're wet. Um, if, if she's wet from going outside and playing or from giving a bath, it, the hair is just everywhere. It's just, it's, it's literally everywhere. And then when I, have, when I have to go to blow dryer, because you know, it's the weather's still up and down outside. Normally during the summer, if I give my dogs baths, I let them air dry outside. And I can't do that quite yet. Um, 
So when I had to give when I have to give her a bath indoors and then I have to blow dry her, I have fur literally stuck over all over my entire walls. It's crazy and it takes me like a couple hours to clean it and then still days later I'm like, oh there's more hair. So shedding is something that you you definitely need to take in consideration as well. Um, they're not a breed that you can get and just never brush them. They do need brushed like at least a good at least every day. I mean, I brush her a couple times a day. Um, but if you don't have the time to dedicate to brushing every day, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, recommend the breed. Um, you can have them groomed, of course. I mean, but still, if you don't take care of their coat properly, it can mat. Um, and that's one thing you don't want to happen because if it undercoat does mat, then you're going to lead to shaving and then you have a half ball of Newfoundland. So, in the end, it's it's really up to you if you have the time and to commit to fully taking care of their coat. Next, I'm going to touch on health. Um, new, the average lifespan for a Newfoundland is 8 to 10 years. Some live longer and some, unfortunately, don't make it that long. Um, they do have quite a list of health issues in the breed, which a lot of them can be avoided if you go through a reputable breeder. And when I say reputable breeder, I mean someone who doesn't just breed these big giant dogs and sells them for thousands of dollars and here you go, here's your AKC paper, papers, enjoy. If you want to get a Newfoundland as a puppy, you need to be prepared for training and socialization. Um, Newfoundlands are known to be gentle giants. They're just, they're sweet, they're loving, they're Velcro dogs, you know, etc. But male Newfound Newfoundlands in general can have a mean streak or like an aggressive streak. I don't want to say mean, but they can be aggressive towards other dogs or strangers. Um, and they also can have, you know, severe shyness. So you need to socialize them as they're young and take them into different environments and around other people and around other dogs have scenarios where you can have people come into your home um, and you know greet them and play with them I understand right now it's hard with everything that's going on with social distancing but um, you know if you I mean maybe it would be best to just not get a puppy right now but if you do because you found an excellent breeder or you found one at a rescue then you know okay but you need to to have the time to devote to training and socialization because Newfoundlands, even though they're sweet and they're loving, they can be stubborn and hard-headed as heck. So they definitely will go through a hard-headed, stubborn streak and it can be frustrating, but as long as you remain the top dog and you're the pack leader and let them know that you're boss, you'll get through it. Um, so yeah, if, if, you, if you do not have the time to devote to training and socialization, then I wouldn't get a new flame. And let me make something, you know, a little clear. Everything that I'm saying is not necessarily with don't get a new flame because of this. It's more or less, I mean, every dog needs training. Every dog needs socialization, you know, especially furry dogs, they need grooming. So it's not necessarily like, well, I wouldn't get this dog. Some of the things I'm saying fall with the golden retrievers as well. Um, I mean, golden retrievers, they require training, they require socialization, they require, you know, a lot of grooming. And so, I mean, it's not just with the Newfoundland breed, it's with quite a few breeds. But I just wanted to let people know and give my honest opinion and feedback so people aren't getting this breed and being like, what the heck? I just, you know, you, you see them, they know they're cute, they're beautiful. You can see how friendly they are. You see all these wonderful videos online, but in reality, once you get that Newfoundland and it starts to grow up, people change their mind and realize this breed wasn't for them. So again, some of these things I'm saying, and not, it's not just, you know, for the Newfoundland breed, it's for any dog breed. Next is price. Um, Newfoundlands generally are not cheap. If you find them in the newspaper or online for five, six, seven hundred dollars, that's great. You know, they may be AKC registered, have shots. Everything may be good for a year or so down the road, and it may be great for the rest of their life. I mean, you just, you really don't know. But generally, Newfoundlands are not cheap. Um, and there's a reason because, you know, reputable breeders, they, they have a lot of time and invested, a lot of time invested into bettering the breed and trying to breed out 
certain you know health conditions and stuff like that and between testing on parents and different generations you know and whatnot you know that's why but i mean if you there is also breeders who will claim that their parents or you know, that the parents are champions and you know this this and that and you know but they can't show any documentation of anything i mean and they want thousands and thousands of dollars so i mean really it's all boils down to research and referrals and talking to the vets and stuff like that so i can't preach that enough i'm all for rescue and adoption but if you want a newfoundland puppy they are very hard to find in a rescue trust me i tried and i did not succeed so if you if you want a newfoundland puppy go through a reputable breeder don't just look in the newspaper or on craigslist because i'm sorry craigslist they that is not a place of reputable breeders they will not post there um and you may find one for five six hundred bucks but down the road that five six hundred bucks can turn into ten thousand dollars so and it may not i mean you never know so basically you're taking a chance and but i do encourage that if you if you are wanting one to take the time to invest in looking into a reputable breeder that has done health clearances you know or has done health testing and has been cleared on not only the parents but grandparents and great-grandparents you know they have a long list of good healthy bloodlines so um, a good breeder will have no problem giving you their vets information to call and check to make sure that you know the dogs have always been kept up on their vaccinations and deworming and heartwarming and stuff like that and um, will usually most likely always have references of people who have bought from them in the past. So keep that in mind, do your research on the breeder. And if something comes back that just looks a little fishy or you just have a bad gut feeling, don't go with them. If you're looking for an adult Newfoundland, I 100% encourage you to look for a Newfoundland rescue. There is a ton in rescues that are needing homes for the exact same reason why I'm making this video because they get this dog thinking that it's exactly what they want and as the dog grows they realize it's 100% not what they want. They can't deal with the fur, they can't deal with the slobber, they can't deal with the dog being stuck up their butt all the time. So I mean, you know, I 100% I encourage you to look into a rescue first. Um, just go on to Google and type in Newfoundland rescues near me and I'm sure there's probably quite a few that'll pop up. The next thing is, and this is not necessarily like a bad thing, but I mean, it can be, it can be kind of annoying in a way. Um, Newfoundlands love water. And when I mean they love water, they love water and they will find water anywhere. It's like they hunt it down, they find it, they're in it. So you have a water bowl, your Newfoundland's gonna play in it. They'll stick their head in it. They'll stick their paws in it. They'll dump it. They'll lay in it. It's just, it is what it is. And, you know, I've had to resort to where I don't keep the water bowl in the house anymore because Daisy likes to dump it and then waller in it. So, yeah. But, so it's just, you know, it's not something that's necessarily a bad thing because, you know, having a dog that loves water is, is amazing. Just watching them just live their best life, romping and playing in the water, swimming in the lake, you know, whatever. But... You need to be aware that if you if you do get a Newfoundland, that you are going to have water in your house at some point. We'll move on to some of the things that are wonderful about the breed. Um, they're loving, they're playful, they're calm, they love to swim, they are goofy, they're seriously really goofy. Um, they're just all around, I mean, they're just a great dog to own as long as you can get past some of the negatives. And I mean, I absolutely love the breed. I've always wanted one. And I met my first Newfoundland when I was younger. My friend had had one and he was just the biggest cuddle bug. I mean, he was a big old bear that just wanted to sit on your lap and just wanted endless attention. Um, you know, but not every Newfoundland is the same. I mean, you have some that get ginormous and just have the real big heads and lots of slobber and you have some that look more like Daisy. Um, Daisy looks more like the Newfoundlands that were, you know, the original ones um, back in the day. They weren't as big as they are now. I mean, back then I think Newfoundlands only got to be about 100 pounds, which I mean back then was huge. And now breeders have bred them to be massive and have these ginormous heads and just which produces the bigger jowls and the more slobber. And you know, and in all reality, it's not good. Bigger is not always better when it comes to a dog because that large frame or that large 
bulk is so hard on their their joints and their hips like they're just not they were never intended to be that big and they've gotten that to that point to where they're just huge and it's sad but you know if you're if you want a new fillet that's not going to be ginormous i mean you you can kind of get an idea by the parents what the parents weigh you need to physically see the parents in person um a lot of reputable breeders they not only have the parents on premises they may have the grandparents do their little you know their life span they may not have the great grandparents but you may you may get fortunate to see the grandparents you know and the parents and or you may at least be able to see pictures and get weights and stuff like that so also consider that when you're looking for a newfoundland is going by the size of you know the parents and grandparents so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed and i tried to keep this as short as possible so if you seen parts where it just kind of cut off and it went to another i have family walking in and out of the house and kids coming up and you know dogs playing in the background or whatever so i have to stop and start but um hopefully you kind of you guys kind of got you know the point and if i know i'm probably forgetting something it's just because i'm, I'm trying to get this done and there's just some, so much stuff going on but uh if you ever have any questions don't you know don't hesitate to message me i try to get back to all my messages um it may take me a day or two but i will get back to you so thanks for watching